begin by making a sign that tells us something in the shape of our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. with you. What a glorious occasion you and I come here to celebrate today. I'm so glad that we don't have to wear a mask because I'm smiling. Uh, <laughs> it has been a long journey for William and James, and so today you and I come together with great joy to celebrate this very sentinel and uh, meaningful moment in their lives. Uh, and welcome to all of you, uh, family and friends, and those who are watching us on, uh, on our Facebook live stream. Welcome to this glorious celebration for the National Catholic Church as, uh, as we celebrate uh, with great joy uh, two of our members being ordained uh, to the diaconate ministry. As we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. Aware that this God who loves us always brings us healing and forgiveness, and together we say, I, I confess, confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned to my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father, mercy is through the death and resurrection of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the Church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. nosotros mismos, 
sino a Jesucristo como Señor. Nosotros no somos más que servidores de ustedes por causa de Jesús. Porque Dios, que ordenó que la luz resplandeciera en las tinieblas, hizo brillar su luz en nuestro corazón, para que conociéramos la gloria de Dios que resplandece en el rostro de Cristo. Pero tenemos este tesoro en vasijas de barro, para que se vea qué tan sublime poder viene de Dios y no de nosotros. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Jesus said, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You're my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. James P. Jakubowski. Present. William A. Waitman. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these candidates, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. William and James, relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose you, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Okay, thanks to God. Good afternoon. I want to welcome, or good morning, I want to welcome all of you here to our celebration for the diaconate ordination. And I just want um, to comment briefly to James and to William to look around the room. People from every part of the country are here. Uh, everyone here is, uh, loves you and wants to support you in this particular ministry. And in some ways, I think very reflective of the National Catholic Church um, when you come and seek to be part of us, we put you to work, right? So just a heads up, just a heads up, right? So uh, Allison is nodding along. We even put William's father to work, right? So, uh, so in many ways, I'm so glad that you're here to share our joy. Uh, the formation team, uh, Mother Cheryl, uh, Mary Scott, Father Andreas, and Father Bernardo have worked very hard along with Father Joseph to prepare William and James for this particular moment in their life. The readings that we have for today might speak tremendously about what we are all called to do by virtue of our baptismal promises. And today, William and James will renew that in a, uh, another dimension of being called. And so they will go where God calls them, not where they would like to go sometimes, right? Uh, following the will of God. And when we hear in the second reading uh, 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 that, uh, that these gifts are about living our lives in such a way that they might reflect the presence of Christ in the midst of the community. And this gospel that we read from the Gospel of John really does speak to all of us about the heart of all of our faith in God, that it is rooted uh, uh, in the miracle that God first loved us and that everything that we do is making a return to God for that love. So I'm so happy that you're here with me uh, and the, and the, uh, and the uh, Ordinandi in the National Catholic Church. Uh, there are people in various stages of formation. They have very different uh, roles today, but in any way, we're, uh, we're all one family. So I'm very glad that you're here. Beloved brothers and sisters, since these, our sons, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help the bishop and his priest in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity, showing themselves to be servants to all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, <coughs> and distribute the Lord's body and blood to the faithful. Furthermore, it will be their duty at the bishop's direction to exhort believers and unbelievers alike to instruct them in holy doctrine. They will preside over public prayer, administer baptism, assist and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funeral rites. Consecrated by the laying on of hands, that comes down to us from the apostles and bound more closely to the service of the altar, they will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. With the help of God, they will go about all these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve. And now, now, dear sons, who are to be raised to the order of the diaconate, 
The Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also should do. As deacons, that is, ministers of Jesus Christ who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God from the heart. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. Since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. Like those who were once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity, you should be people of good reputation, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit. Firmly rooted and grounded in faith, you are to show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and people, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and the stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope offered by the gospel. Now you are not only hearers of the gospel, but also its ministers. Hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Express your actions by the word of God, which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then, on the last day, when you go out to meet your Lord, you will be able to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of your Lord. My dear sons, before you enter the, the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. William and James, do you resolve to be consecrated to the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and in the church's tradition. I do. William and James, do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with the spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I do. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to be an example of Christ? of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar. I do, with the help of God. James and William, may God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion on the day of your salvation. James, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. William, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out his grace and his blessings on these, his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate.
for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Hear our prayer. 
Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, <coughs> giver of every good gift, <coughs> who apportions every order and assigns every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provisions for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the children of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so you now establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred office to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed 70 men and women of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry so that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen people the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these, the servants of yours, who will minister at your table, and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord God, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gifts of your sevenfold grace for the, for the fruitful carrying out of the work of ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual disciplines. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that they, by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, may they be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
So pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Our Father, who art in heaven, Father most holy, your Son washed the feet of his disciples that he might give us an example. Accept these gifts and grant that the offering, by offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and a willingness to serve our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, with heavenly wisdom ordained that many ministers should be that many ministers should be carried out, that many ministries should be carried out within the church. Christ accords the dignity of a royal priesthood to the people he has made his own. Some of these he chooses as a, as, a, as, a, as a brother's care to share his sacred ministry by the laying on of hands. He calls them to lead your holy people in love, nourish them with your word, and strengthen them through the sacraments. They are to offer their lives to your service and for the salvation of all, as they strive to grow in the likeness of Christ and to honor you by the courageous witness of faith and love. And so we join the angels and the saints in, 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 in your joyous hymn of praise as we sing. Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien. 
and with all the saints, by their merits and prayers, grant us your constant help and protection. Lord, accept this offering from your whole family. We offer it for your servants whom you have chosen for the order of deacons. In your mercy, protect the gifts you have given them, that the ministry they have received from you may, be your great, may, may, may by your grace yield an abundant harvest. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you, an offering in spirit and in truth. Let it become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he suffered, he took bread, and looking up to heaven to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and handed the cup to all of those whom he loved. He said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your just servant Abel and the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, command that your angel carry this sacrifice to your altar in heaven. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your son Jesus, let us all be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have died and have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. Grant them and all who sleep in Christ a haven of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For ourselves, too. Sinners who trust in your mercy and love. We ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Welcome us into their company, not considering what we deserve, but freely granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and holiness. You bless them and make them holy.
You might know why they don't let me do this in the parish. <laughs> Amen. 
Christ. Oftentimes, when we're a small and intimate crowd, I believe that Jesus probably shared his last meal with his disciples and they all ate at the same time. And so together as God's people called to be his church, uh, this is indeed Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love and how happy are we to be called to his son. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting.
Let us pray. God of mercy, you feed us with the bread of life and the body and blood of your Son, our Lord. Confirm in service and charity those who minister the food of life. Bring all who live by the strength of these holy gifts to nourish the hungry in every need. And so rejoice in that eternal mercy which awaits your faithful servants. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the hymn to the Blessed Mother. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulceo, Expes Nostra Salve. A te clamamos, Exodes Filii, Wonderful musicians, right? And they did such a beautiful job leading us in song. 
uh, Mark Troutman, our organist, and, uh, and, Jul and, and Julia Lutz, who uh, uh, cantered beautifully for us. So thank you so much for adding to us. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Allow him that.